between an $800 camera and an $8,000 camera was? Well, I'm going to show you guys that today. So make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, these are my two go-to cameras for when I am shooting travel vlogs and they do pair really well together. I use my Canon 1DX for B-roll and photos and then I use my Canon M50 for vlogging. One of the most obvious differences between these two cameras is the size. The Canon 1DX is very heavy and very large, but it does shoot incredible footage. I get so excited looking over this footage because when you're shooting in 120 frames per second on this camera, it just looks so extremely cinematic and you could honestly film someone doing something in a back alley and it would still look fantastic on the 1DX. The obvious upside to the Canon M50 is that it's really compact. You can easily put it in a small backpack or even a larger purse and it does get good quality photos and videos as well. So the Canon M50 retails for around $500 and it does come with a 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens. I actually bought a new lens right away when I got it. So I have the 11 to 22 millimeter on here now and I honestly love this lens for travel vlogging. It gives you a really wide frame and so you can get a lot in the shot. My biggest complaint about this lens though and comments that you guys have actually made on some of my vlogs is that it's really shaky. So that's the only thing that bothers me about this lens, especially when I'm walking and I'm filming the travel vlogs, but other than that, I do love it and think it works really nicely with the Canon M50. The Canon 1DX is obviously a very high quality camera and the body alone of this camera will set you back $5,500 US. And obviously that doesn't come with a lens, so then you have to buy a lens on top. My two go-to lenses is the Sigma 20 millimeter 1.4 along with the 16 to 35 millimeter, but there are so many lenses you can buy for this camera. Obviously the lenses are just as expensive as most other cameras and so that's kind of the downfall to having an expensive camera is that every single accessory that goes along with it is also very expensive. The batteries of the Canon 1DX for one battery cost $200, but given the batteries do last a really long time, so that's the positive upside to that. The 16 to 35 millimeter lens will set you back around $1,900, and the Sigma 20 millimeter 1.4 is $900. The next difference between the two cameras is that the Canon 1DX is a full frame camera, whereas the Canon M50 is gonna be a crop sensor. So for example, if you were gonna put a 16 to 35 millimeter lens on the Canon 1DX, you're gonna actually get that 16 to 35 millimeter range. Whereas if you put it on the Canon M50, it's gonna be cropped and it's not gonna be as wide. Both of these cameras actually shoot in 120 frames per second. The Canon 1DX has the 1080p at 120 frames, whereas the M50 has 720 at 120 frames. And I'm gonna be just real transparent with you guys. I had no idea this could shoot in 120 frames per second. Um, so we're exploring this together really on all these test shots because I really only use my 1DX for B-roll. I haven't actually played around with this camera a ton for doing B-roll, so yeah, who knew? It can shoot in 120 frames too. The Canon M50 does have built-in Wi-Fi, so you can easily send photos from your camera to your phone. The Canon 1DX doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi, but in my head it kind of makes sense because most people who are shooting on the Canon 1DX aren't then transferring right then and there photos to their phone. They're usually going back, doing a whole bunch of editing, and then putting it out just because it is a really professional high-end camera. All right, so the time has come. We're gonna get into some really fun photos and videos, tests for these two cameras. So let's do this. So these first clips I wanted to show you guys are straight out of the camera with no editing or stabilization added. And the first thing I noticed when switching between the two clips is that the dynamic range on the 1DX is definitely a lot better than the M50. For these next side-by-side -side comparisons, I did add a bit of color grading and stabilization, and then I slowed them down 50%. I shot these in 60 frames per second, and even though you can see a difference, it's honestly not by much. So I was quite surprised actually to see how well my Canon M50 held up against the 1DX, especially in 60 frames per second. So one of the main reasons I love the Canon 1DX is for its 120 frames per second, which is this beautiful super slow motion video. And that's actually where I noticed the biggest difference between the 1DX and the M50, as you can see from this footage right here. Unfortunately, it's not as good. It's definitely still capable, but it's not nearly as sharp. And because it has manual focus when it's in the 120 frames, even if you move a little bit, the image is most likely gonna look blurry, especially if the person filming you isn't necessarily a videographer themselves, then they might not know how to properly focus it and you can run into it being out of focus. So here we have another side-by-side -side comparison and I definitely noticed a huge difference with this. You can see on the right with the Canon 1DX, 
likes that it's just so much sharper and clearer and the dynamic range is definitely better between the dark and the light. I did add a bit of color grading on here just because I wanted to show it how I'd normally put it out if it was in a vlog say. So since those previous test shots were actually taken using two different lenses and lenses make such a big difference, I wanted to use this Canon converter I have right here, stick it onto my 16 to 35 millimeter so I could now use it on the Canon M50. And to be honest, I don't really do this ever just because the lens is gigantic compared to the camera. So at that point, I may as well just carry around my 1DX. So these are the shots I got. And once again, I was pleasantly surprised. Obviously it is a bit higher quality on the 1DX, but honestly not by like a crazy, crazy amount. But keep in mind with having my 16 to 35 millimeter EF lens on the M50, it's automatically gonna make the quality a lot better. As for the photos, I do notice a quality difference here. I noticed the lighting as well, just when they were raw, was a lot better on the 1DX compared to the M50. So after seeing all the footage side by side, what is your thoughts? Is it worth the extreme price difference? Definitely comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.